Let's see what kind of comments we get on this one. <laughs> Europeans are mad at me. We are back to look at more crazy RV setups. Today we're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly out there. As always, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and if you got some crazy picture or video of an RV, some crazy setup out there, send it my way. So let's take a look at part two of crazy, stupid, or weird RVs uh, out there on the internet. So this is an interesting one, a convertible VW Bug with some sort of construct around it that I guess, would you call this a Class B or a Class C RV? I don't know if it even falls into any class. And this one has um, got some serious length to it. I guess if size matters, then this truck wins the battle because uh, with the double wheels in the back and the extra long shell, I did wonder for a second, is this some AI generated uh, picture of an of a RV? But overall, it looks fairly real and not Photoshopped. What are your thoughts? Is this thing even real? Have you ever seen anything like this truck and camper shell? All right, now, it took me a while to try to figure out what's going on with this one. This appears to have some sort of fifth wheel trailer that's like on top of the truck as if it was a camper shell, and then it still has the axle attached, or is this a camper shell attached to the back of an RV? I just can't figure it out. The one thing I gotta say is, at least it's got those big yellow straps. Those big yellow straps, that's not going anywhere. Safe. Couldn't be safer because that's not going anywhere. Then we have this Class A RV that seems to have concocted or created a second story. I'm assuming this is more of a loft in there or a really tall uh, open air uh, living space. Or maybe it's the upstairs meth lab. I don't really know. But uh, they've got some sort of trailer attached to that thing in some fashion. And, you know, it's amazing what people will do when they want to, quote unquote, customize their RV. I've seen a few people do this where they take a camper shell that would normally go in the back of a pickup truck and they just drop it on a utility trailer. Uh, it seems to work. Uh, the only thing, of course, is you need to make sure you got enough straps because if you have enough straps, then that's not going anywhere. And here we've got a Class A trailer mounted on the back of some car. I'd like to believe that this RV is just resting there. But uh, if it's connected to there, I don't know how, I don't know why. And I'm hoping this is just sitting in line waiting to get destroyed at the scrapyard. Now you may think you've seen rooftop tents, but I don't think any of us have ever seen a rooftop tent like this guy, where you take basically a pop-up tent, take it off the frame, and stick it on top of your work truck. That thing's probably at least a one ton truck, if not more, with that big old dually in the back. This takes rooftop tents to a whole new level. I think this may start a trend. And of course, they got lots of straps there holding it together. And as long as they got those straps there, that's not going anywhere. That might actually might be going somewhere. And I'd like to give the RVing with Joe tip of the hat, Ford Gold Star Award to this gentleman for coming up with this idea because only a fellow crazy Ford owner like me would come up with such a wild idea. So Gold Star Award goes to you, buddy. Now this one is serious about solar. This custom made rig not only has a massive amount of solar power, it's got some sort of open air deck and then it's got, you know, the picket fence because you think of your dream house and your retirement home, who doesn't think of a picket fence? But yeah, this one's definitely an odd one. And I would like to thank Stephen J, one of my viewers, for sending this one in. He spotted in a Walmart parking lot. Um, I have a feeling this rig is not going to last one more rainy season before that back corner is just dragging on the road. I'm sure this guy's down on his luck, but this RV is not doing him any favors. I saw this rig and just thought, cool. Yes, I can see taking this one off-road. I love the look of it. It actually reminds me of, for those of you who saw Stripes, an old Bill Murray movie, the EM50 Urban Assault Vehicle, which was actually based on a real RV that was around. But, of course, the Urban Assault Vehicle is a little different setup with its armored windows and its ability to fire missiles at tanks or to operate as a troop carrier with a drop-down ramp and the fact that it's reinforced so it can take on bullets and it can even crash through the gates. Yeah, it was just a movie, but I absolutely loved this, and it was one of the things that got me into wanting an RV. Speaking of tactical RVs, I don't know what these folks were thinking when they came up with this crazy, like, futuristic, 
post-apocalyptic off-road monster machine that's supposed to take you anywhere in the world and be completely self-sufficient. Um, it apparently did start getting built. Uh, you can go to the website for this uh, for, the, for this truck, and they've got videos, National Geo and folks doing documentaries on them building this, but I haven't seen any footage of it actually hitting the road, so I'm wondering if it survived the pandemic era. But yeah, check over to Caravan. You'll see some of the details on this monster thing. Uh, of course, these post-apocalyptic solutions work out really great, as long as you've got a diesel refinery on board, because otherwise, as soon as you run out of gas, this big old hunk of metal is going to become pretty darn useless to you. Like I said, there was another VW coming. Somebody took this Beetle, and they really did a number and doing a really nice job on, on chopping it up into this pickup configuration. And they clearly spent all the money on the Beetle side because as cool as this pop-up is, it's pretty minimalist on the inside. Um, yeah, I, you know, Kudos to them for putting this together, and maybe they're going to be building out that inside a little more. But it's a fairly simple setup. I'm sure it works for them, and you do need to keep it light if you're going to be towing behind a Beetle. So kudos to them for building this thing. Does anybody know what this hitching mechanism is, though? Is this what a gooseneck look like? You know, I'm just a bumper tow guy. But uh, anybody seen what kind of uh, hitch this is? Maybe they can tell me in the comments. Now, one of the RVs I had in the last video I did, the, the first video of this series, a lot of people thought that some of these RVs were fake. So with this one, I know I had some people thinking somebody was just backed up to uh, a fifth wheel. But no, if you take a look at this, you'll see here's the actual video of... This this such uh, truck pulling this RV backwards. I don't know what kind of bumper hitch they have welded on or arranged for. And of course, there are no lights on what I guess we're going to call the back of the fifth wheel. So yeah, this one's real. Yeah, now this one, okay, a lot of people also thought this one was fake. That maybe this was just dumped at a gas station and these guys backed up. But I'll tell you, when I look closely at this, it does not look like the front end is on the ground at all. I tried to zoom in and enhance the image. There's just not enough in the image for me to be 100% sure that this is attached to the car. But when I look at the car, the car looks like it's completely weighed down 100%. Like the shocks are completely depressed. So I still think that this trailer is hooked up to this car. Of course, I want to hear what you think. If you don't think this trailer is attached to this car, let me know. What are your thoughts on this? All right, now let's talk about heavy-duty trucks. I showed a heavy-duty truck in the last one that was just towing a simple fifth wheel. But you can actually take a heavy-duty truck, and it can be an automatic, something very simple for a person to drive, and, and set it up to just be a private, not-for-hire truck. And that's what you use to tow your RV. Of course, there's advantages to this. You can tow almost anything you can think of. And then you can add all kinds of goodies to the back, like you see here with the Jeep mounted on the back of the truck and then hooked up to the fifth wheel. And you want to get really crazy, you think of Will Smith's trailer when he goes on set and it's basically towed by a semi and it's made by these people who make full-size basic houses that you attach to semi-trucks. That's at the extreme edge of the heavy-duty uh, tow vehicle market. And then you can do things as well like this guy who just took an Airstream and took it off the, the chassis and just mounted it right onto the back of his big rig. So, I mean, that works. You basically take an Airstream trailer and turn it into a super class C uh, RV setup. And look at all those gas tanks he's got there. Man, this thing could probably drive from the Canadian border to Alaska without ever having to fill up with gas. And then you got a little more funky kind of customizations like this, where they just took an oversized camper that goes in the back of a pickup truck, mounted it on the back of this full-size semi. You got this whole back deck that you can use for cargo or, heck, just for relaxing once you stop. This guy took his heavy-duty truck and, like others, took the bones of a very large uh, over-truck camper and put it on the back with all kinds of work boxes and actually built a ramp or some sort of lift so that he can have his golf cart or off-road car uh, here so that, you know, a lot of these RV areas in Utah and Arizona and at the big resorts, you can drive around in golf carts and alternative vehicles. So this guy can pull up and have his alternative vehicle to go around and and get groceries and then go visit all the, the local stuff to do. So I thought this was kind of an interesting setup. But let's go back to the traditional use of a heavy duty tow vehicle. And most of the folks are using it to not just tow a really large fifth wheel, but some extra goody, you know, an extra toy. In this case, they've got an off-road vehicle in the back with some kayaks on top, and they can still hook up a fifth wheel in the back. But let's talk about Watts on Wheels. What you doing now, Dave? Driving down the road. So tell us what it's like to drive a heavy duty truck while towing a 20,000 pound fifth wheel with a nine foot tote 
on the back of it for our total length of 76 feet. Jeezy. Nothing to it. Now these folks are my favorite couple. I've been watching them for years. I think they've been doing this uh, lifestyle now for like nine years. Uh, sweet little couple, a lot of cool toys. On this truck, they now have two Can-Am Spiders on a custom elevator lift setup. They used to have a smart car on the back of their tow rig, but they've actually taken that off, moved these Can-Am Spiders on there, and they still carry the smart car on the very back on this Idaho Tote Freedom Hauler device, which you know, we've talked about turducken before, that I, and this is not trailer turducken. This is not actually a trailer at all. The tote is fixed to the trailer, and the back wheels actually turn and all the way to the back, so they can back out of these really large RV spaces and make the turn, and not have the tires dragging laterally back and forth as they make these wide turns. It's a really unique setup. They really push the envelope, but they show what you can do with a heavy-duty trailer. I'll make sure to put a link to Watts on Wheels down in the description. I strongly encourage checking out their channel. They're lovely. And you can see there are other versions of this, right? Where you can just take an extension on your trailer, throw some wheels on it, especially if they're casters or, or somehow they're steerable wheels, and you're not actually towing a second trailer. You're just extending your trailer and putting a supplemental wheel on the end. Turducken. I explained in the last video about turducken here. Turducken is when you take a chicken and you cook it inside a duck and you cook that duck inside a turkey. So you've got a chicken inside a duck inside a turkey called a turducken. It tastes awesome. However, it's not necessarily the best model for towing. And since then, I've found some more examples of turducken. Now these folks have a mild form of turducken. I think this is a very reasonable setup where they actually have at least the two different vehicles stacked on top of each other. So this large Class C is only towing one trailer. But it is sort of a form of turducken where you've got the boat on the car, on the back of the trailer attached to the RV. But let's look at some more extreme versions of this. This is rolling around TikTok, although the video has now been deleted, uh, where you got a heavy duty truck pulling a fifth wheel, which is towing a pickup truck using a bumper hitch, and that pickup truck has a cargo trailer attached to it. I believe this is somewhere in Europe, and according to the TikTok video, this is actually legal for this driver to do. I'm guessing he's a commercial driver. On this one, you've got a pickup truck carrying a fifth wheel with a full-size pontoon boat on the back, and if that wasn't enough, you got another trailer carrying a jet ski on the very back of that. If that doesn't scream America, I don't know what does. Now this rather phallic setup uh, has a boat sitting on top of this truck, which renders the fifth wheel hitch unusable, right? Because there's a boat on top. But to accommodate that, they've got some weird device that I've never seen that's effectively a fifth wheel hitch attached to the back of the bumper uh, toe of the truck. And then they have the trailer hooked into that fifth wheel hitch. And on the back of that fifth wheel trailer is a bumper hitch with another cargo trailer. So you've got quite a turducken set up there. And finally, parked at this gas station, you've got the classic truck with a pull trailer, so that's not a fifth wheel, with another bumper pull of a tow dolly with a pickup truck on the back of there where you can see they got the picnic table. And then finally, you've got this trailer at the end with a motorcycle on there. And of course, they've got those yellow straps there that I don't even think are tightened down. And with those yellow straps, that means... Yeah, that's not going anywhere. When I did the first one of these videos, I seemed to uh, piss off the Europeans when I talked about a caravan, if you will, a caravan with a Porsche. Yeah, basically I was making fun of their caravans, which is what they call trailers in England, and all the various small vehicles that were towing them. And everyone was ripping me for uh, not understanding how they work. So I'm going to do a video at some point here just on the contrast between European and North American uh, trailers. And I'm sure I'll make fun of them then too. Anyway, check back here. Make sure you click subscribe, like this video. If you've got some cool video or picture of a crazy RV setup that you want to see here, send it to me at RVingWithJoe at gmail.com. I'd love to put it up here. I'll give you credit for it. And no matter what crazy tow setup you have out there, just get busy living. See you on the next video.